The jewelry was dynamic and sculptural. It had so much mobility to it. He was a jazz aficionado, and the way that the jewelry moves and swings and swerves is so similar to jazz. He was a glorious technician. He understood how to turn metal, saw metal, grind down the edges and filed them and polished and to make them beautiful. He took a humble material like brass and copper, bronze, and elevated it. One of the things that was cemented in my life from a mentor like Art is to know that you're not alone in this. In fact, you should be holding the hand of someone else who you push in, and then they'll push you in a different way. You don't throw away anything. That's one of the things that Joyce taught me. You don't throw away anything. I moved here to Baltimore in 2008 and completed my certificate in jewelry design. All of my faculty members who taught me were white. So when you start talking about entering into a narrative or a conversation about your culture and how you bring your culture and your identity into the work, I had to find another voice. Joyce had seen me tinkering with my jewelry and she started critiquing me. Because you really work this surface nicely. That started the mentoring relationship. I do have a suggestion. But I'm not reading it as a face so well. Okay. You might want to shape the eye so you could drop the stone in. Gotcha. So you'll have a real eye shape. In schools and colleges, they're asking basic questions like, where are the teachers that look like me? If you are telling me that I can do this, how come I don't see somebody like me who is doing this? We need all of those stories, those narratives, that archive of history to come forward. And when you have that right brain artistic capacity, you have a specialness that talks about a way of living, a way of being, belief systems. Now, when you say I'm a mentor, I am in the sense a person who believes you don't give up. You have this one life and you have the ability to make jewelry.